Big news here the last couple of days. Brittany Griner freed from uh, Russia, uh, was serving a nine-year sentence for bringing cannabis oil into Russia. If I want to fast forward the tape a year from now, Brittany Griner doesn't play in the WNBA. I don't think the WNBA survives. That, I think, is the new stressor because the last thing most people ask someone who's pretty much been held as a, a prisoner in a country that's not on the same terms with this one is... How soon will they get back on the basketball court? Like, there's a lot of psychological breakdown. Presume that she's not playing. But in a league that's looking to draw fans, uh, any type of storyline, positive or negative to what one may believe, it brings attention. And if she doesn't show back up on the court, I don't see how the WNBA survives in five years. Someone may email me, KJ, why'd you say that? I'm just saying. That's going to be a tough quandary. Like, we need you to play. I don't want to play. I just don't want to play. That's going to be the interesting story moving forward. Deion Sanders leaving uh, an HBCU, Jackson State University, to go to the University of Colorado. University of Colorado was one in eleven last year. Uh, if I was Foyer, I would have even said no to. I would have said no to the job. But a lot of the hubbubaloo of of Deion Sanders leaving an HBCU and going to the University of Colorado is one. The University of Colorado sucks, and two. Dion's initial issues was trying to get hired at like a Florida state. And look at the light, look at the lay of the land of college football. Where are the better teams in the South? So if Dion had gotten the Auburn job, then yeah, there's progress. If Dion was up for Mississippi state or Ole Miss or Texas A&M or something like that. Yeah. Like Colorado one and 11, as cold as it is up there. Like, pff, no, no, I mean, the reason why, and Fourier can tell you, the reason why it worked, because you had the promise keepers. It's like, promise to keep yourself away from the girls and play football. Fourier and, always, and I always talk about one of his college teammates that we both knew, one of his teammates that we knew from in Charlotte when I was working there. I'm like, yeah, program kind of changed after that. But look, I'll give you a great example. Hall of Famer Walter Payton went to Jackson State University and played there for his three, four years. And the reason why he was at Jackson State, one, was because of his brother, but two, none of the schools like Ole Miss, Mississippi State, even recruited him at all. In fact, when he came out of high school, they were just integrating the Southeastern Conference. So they didn't care how good Walter Payton was. Well, imagine Walter Payton suddenly decides to go to Ole Miss in his third year because Ole Miss suddenly decides how good Walter is. Walter chose to stay and realized that his bigger gift was going to be on the next level, not just moving to something menial just so that way he can prove to somebody who isn't going to win. I think that's the situation that Deion Sanders is in. Bro, no team goes from one and 11 and 11 from one and 11 then to 11 and one, unless it's Nick Nolte and blue chips. (laughs) Let me go get Lelouch down in Louisiana and get this other kid whose mom needs a house. Yeah. I'm not saying that's what Deion is going to do. But you, there's no pr- program in the history where you literally lose all your games but one and then turn around and make yourself into some type of powerhouse. Dion may get stuck in that Colorado job with no wins, and everybody's going to say, was the ice colder on that side, brother? <laughs>